welcome to yet another enlightening show on beef farming. Kenya has a thriving livestock industry, which is one of the largest and most developed in the sub-Saharan Africa. The livestock subsector contributes about 10% directly to the overall gross domestic profit. It also accounts for about 30% of total agricultural products which earn the country foreign exchange through the export of live animals, dairy products and hides and skins. There is need to take advantage of the poverty-reducing potential of the livestock subsector by developing appropriate livestock technologies. The development objectives of the beef subsector have been to increase production of beef and beef products through utilization of superior genotypes, improved husbandry techniques, value addition and marketing. As such, improvement programs have been initiated in the past to improve the uptake of management strategies by beef farmers and processing and export of beef mainly through the Kenya Meat Commission and a number of private initiatives. At the International Livestock Research Institute's Kapiti Research Station located 60 kilometers southeast of Nairobi maintains several thousand head of livestock including cattle, goats and camels. Ilona Glucks is the research facility manager. Piti um, is a farm that is 13,000 hectares or 32,000 acres large. We are in the semi-arid lands here with an average rainfall of 500 milliliters of rain. And um, we keep cattle, uh, 2,800 at the moment roughly. We have sheep, about 1,300. We have 550 goats and we have also some camels, about 70. We have mainly more, most of our animals, like 95% are Buran cattle, so the Buran that came come from northern Kenya and Ethiopia. And um, it is the improved Buran breed. So the traditional Buran is a dual purpose animal, both for beef and for milk. And then through um, breeding, selective breeding over time, over a hundred years, they have created a beef animal now. The Buran is very specific for these areas because it is quite adapted to the semi-arid lands. It can do very well with this change in forage availability during the dry spell and the wet season. It can walk well without water. So that's why it is, and the beef is very good, so the meat is very good. So um, that, is, that is why we'll have it here in this environment. ILRI's research for development agenda covers a range of areas from laboratory-based biosciences to field-based research. Topics include animal productivity covering health, genetics and feeds, food safety, livestock and environment, bearing in mind that most beef farming is done in the arid and semi-arid regions of the country, there are numerous challenges affecting this venture. These include drought, inadequate breeding services, poor animal husbandry, inadequate extension and advisory services, inadequate feeds and feeding, high cost of inputs, poor access to markets and inadequate integration of industry players and the most significant is disease outbreaks. Kapiti's current research takes on some of the most pressing diseases such as the malignant catarrhal fever. Well, so this was done really over years and years and years and years through selective breeding. So you have maybe a boran that looks very healthy and has a good rum for beef. So then you use and try to reproduce with this one and then you do that again and again and again. And this was happening over the last, I don't know, 100 years probably. So that's why you have now this animal that is a beef animal, you know, because they selectively bred it for beef production. Yeah. Catheral fever. It is a disease caused by a virus and it is unfortunately transmitted by wildebeest during their calving season. So like now, we are in, in February now, so March, the wildebeest come onto our farm to calve down. Then during the calving process and also in the first couple of weeks of the life of the calf, they are shedding this virus and they are contaminating the pasture. So for the wildebeest, the disease, the, this virus doesn't do anything, it just carries this virus, okay? So, but when now my boran cattle move over the same pasture where that wildebeest gave birth and it picks up this virus, it will die. It will get infected and there's nothing you can do, you cannot treat, you cannot do anything, it will just simply die. It will get affected by the lungs, it will start getting high fever, there's snot coming out of the nose, you know, they, they start panting like this and eventually they will die. 
Ilri scientist paired with the United Kingdom Moredan Research Institute and Global Alliance for Livestock Veterinary Medicines to develop a vaccine trial for 146 steers who were 8 to 18 months old. Trials conducted at Kapiti have shown a vaccine efficacy rate of 86%. Work is underway to assess the current controlled methods for MCF and to develop methods for the production of commercial vaccine. We there, as, as the name said, with the International Livestock Research Institute um, and we keep cattle and sheep and goats and camels for research purposes mainly and um, there is a prototype of a vaccine for malignant catharal fever which was produced in the UK and we have done field trials here with this prototype of the vaccine to see if there is an efficacy, that's what it's called. So is the vaccine working? So we did a little trial with, it was 144 cattle. So half of them were vaccinated, the other half was not vaccinated. Then we moved them into, actually really into the wildebeest while they were carving down. They were actually even playing together at the end because we really wanted them to get infected. And then we compared the survival rate between those that were vaccinated and those that weren't. And um, it proved that the ones that were vaccinated, they, they, most of them survived. So that's what you call efficacy. So the, the efficacy of this vaccine is around 85%. So we did what is called a proof of principle. And now we are trying to reach out to um, the private sector, to the government as well, and see how we can get this proof of principle along the long development line of vaccine production so that the farmers who are suffering from, from this, uh, not the farmers, but their animals who are suffering from the disease um, have a vaccine they can protect it with. So we are still testing out if you need to do it annually, is it something you'd only need to do maybe once in a lifetime, the tendency as it looks now, it will have to be annual, right? So you have to repeat this vaccination every year with the animals. So there's a, still a lot of research that needs to be done. The costing obviously as well, especially if it is annual, you, you can't spend a thousand bob per animal for a vaccine, right? So this is all things that we are trying to work on with private partners to see how we can bring that into the market eventually. In Kenya, diseases are particularly severe in extensive livestock systems. In these regions, animal health service delivery is hampered by various factors, including the vast yet sparsely populated areas, nomadic way of life, poor infrastructure, insufficient technical personnel and lack of enabling policies and support structures. Vaccines are the most effective intervention for livestock disease control in reducing diseases, deaths and improving human health. Even so, some current practices limit the scope of private sector's participation in vaccination, thus creating an attractive business environment. For example, there exists a perception among vaccine value chain actors that the current veterinary regulations restrict delivery of vaccines by the private See, sector. You know, we have a vaccine development unit in Ilri, uh, and this vaccine development uni unit works, in example, on East Coast fever. There is a vaccine which is since 40 years or something available, uh, developed by Muguga and partly with the support of, of Ilri. And, you know, East Coast fever is a parasitic disease and they developed uh, dec decades ago the ITM method. It means infectious and treatment method. So you infect with the parasite and in immediately you give an antibiotic, oxytetracycline example, and then the parasite is killed, but the immunity in the animal lasts for Ever. So it's a long-life protection, it's a fantastic vaccine, very difficult to produce. So we produced it in Illri once, but we are not a vaccine manufacturing site. So it was transferred the manufacturing to Malawi. There's an AU IBAR Malawi government vaccine manufacturing site and they are taking over the manufacturing. But we work on, as a research organization, we work also East Coast Fever, we have CPPP, CCPP, we work on African Swine Fever, which is a very important disease. We are working with a lot of international organizations to develop a vaccine. There is no vaccine up to now, and you know China 
uh, they had once uh, uh, 500 million pigs, to, uh, down to 200 because uh, the rest died on this African swine fever um, infection. And it's uh, Europe, US, everybody's frightened about this disease. So and that's, that's something where we do research. There are other diseases where we do research, but we can then do only research until the proof of concept. They said we develop a vaccine until the point where we know it will work. But then it needs to be handed over to a private sector to develop. Uh, we, they have the manufacturing skills. They know how to produce huge amounts of uh, vaccine doses. And this that's the way how we work together. And we are currently in a new process, which we call TASL, which means transforming animal health service and solutions for low and middle income countries where we work together with GALFMED, which is an organization helping the private sector to bring their products and vaccines and pharmaceuticals to the market. And there's another organization which is called Clean Global, which is clinical testing organization and we are the partners. And the idea is that, uh, you know, there are many modern technologies for vaccines available in the human medicine and we want to get these technologies work together and then find the private sector partner and then develop a vaccine. So it's not possible without the private sector to develop good, qualitative and ma many enough which you need and on a low price it's only possible if you have a really big manufacturing unit. The Principal Secretary for Crop Development and Agricultural Research, Professor Hamadi Boga, who had paid a courtesy call to the research station, echoed the importance for the Ministry of Agriculture to work with private agricultural research bodies such as IGRI in ensuring food safety and security in the future. The most important uh, investment in any agricultural enterprise is the genetics. And for you to arrive at good genetics which will give you good economic value or the qualities that you are looking for. It takes many years of research. I think when we were visiting the, the ship, you saw the breeding between the Dopa and the Maasai and the products that come out of that. They have better qualities, they are more resistant. So you are, the whole agriculture industry is, is built on research. You start from there, you generate superior seeds or you generate superior breeds. Otherwise you are stuck with what was there before. And in terms of being able to feed the, the global population, you have to always improve on productivity. Whether you are dealing with livestock or you are dealing with the, with the crops. Like the, the, the borans you have seen there, that, that's a crossbreed, but when you see it, Already you, you, you see it's a fantastic animal compared to the original boran that uh, is out there. Of course it has traits which are preserved and which are useful. So it's very important to build the knowledge base. And so when you see those, they are, they are products, they are solutions that have come out of many years of research that support the whole livestock industry. With that, let's take a short break for now. Keep it KTN Farmers TV.